Hey guys, welcome back to How to Boost Your Car series. We finally got the car back together. We got a lot of our plumbing done. Engine's in, we got it tuned. We're ready to go on the dyno and curious to see what kind of power she makes. We're gonna recap on some of the modifications that we did to the car and what all we have to do in order for it to be able to handle the power that we're trying to go for. So some of the things that we have to consider is that we're turbocharging the vehicle. So of course we have to build the bottom end. So bottom half of the block is pretty much what we're going over. It got connecting rods, it got forged pistons, everything like that. So the bottom ends are insurance. That's It's not making us power, but it's what's being able to maintain that power. Um, it is on a factory GSR crank, but that is a factory forged crank. After we go from there, where we start to make some of our power is gonna be the cylinder head. So cylinder head was CNC ported by Skunk. Some of the work that was also done is we have skunk stage one cam shafts that are mounted in there it's got valve spring work done it's pretty much designed to handle the rpm and it's meant to really push this thing to the limit it's also got some adjustable cam gears over here on the front so that we can change our cam timing in relation to the actual engine timing then after that we get into the fun part and that's going to be our turbocharger here so we have the sizing video that we have so if you guys haven't seen that yet check that out but this is our Borg Warner 468, 400 frame series, 68 millimeter inlet. It's going through a T4 flange twin scroll. So it is then going out four inch exhaust pipe all the way through the back of the car to a skunk muffler. On the intake side of that, we are going down to our intercooler. It's actually a backdoor setup. So the inlets on the backside and the outlet is also on the backside, makes it easier for mounting, which then we go into our fabricated intake pipe. Make sure that you guys have looked at our fabrication video or some of the tips that we give you guys for some of that stuff as well. After we go through the uh, charge pipe over here, we're gonna go back to our Skunk 2 intake. Skunk 2 intake, it's fitted with a carbon fiber fuel rail, 1150 cc injectors and that's being fed with a half inch fuel line that gives us about 800 horsepower worth of fuel. All right guys, let's go get the car on the dyno and let's see how she does. So we're utilizing the dyno. It's gonna pretty much tell us the proven facts. That is how we physically know the amount of power that we are actually making. Dyno measures torque and then uses an engine calculation based on RPM uh, to tell us how much power that we're actually producing. So right now we're hooking up a couple straps on the back just so when we start to pull it up onto the rollers on the front, the car physically isn't gonna go over the top of the rollers and then try to roll over the front. So when it comes to tightening down your straps, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna put too much preload on it, but at the same time, when you're driving a car with this much power, you got to make sure that you have enough preload that the car isn't going to technically try to drive itself on the dyno. This right here is actually what we're going to use to monitor our engine RPM. Um, this pretty much goes on the crankshaft pulley and it has a piece of reflective tape and that is going to correlate our direct engine RPM and that's what the computer uses to run its calculation to determine uh, vehicle horsepower. So it goes kind of right on the fender well. This is an optic style sensor. All it does is it shoots an infrared beam at it and when it sees that beam come back, then it knows that that has been one revolution of the actual crankshaft revolving. So right now all I'm doing is just making sure that the infrared beam is actually hitting the harmonic balancer. So right now it's got a light that actually indicates whenever it sees a pulse. But if you also look at the computer, you can see the RPM up there as well. right now we're just double checking a couple things making sure the car is kind of happy we've got engine rpm based on the actual dyno so it's getting its rpm input that it needs and uh, now we're just going to technically just roll it out as i like to call it make sure that the car kind of handles fine make sure everything uh, is tight go through double check the straps and then we should be about ready for a pull so this is our basic dyno screen uh, super flow setup so we got some basic things here. We got our vehicle speed, we've got engine speed, our uh, uh, measured power and our measured torque. Now, one of the things I was telling you guys earlier is that we have to have that RPM signal to actually get power. A dyno, uh, dynamometer actually only measures torque. It has to physically then calculate power based on engine RPM. We're gonna start about 60 miles an hour and just based on a couple like preliminary tests we did and whatnot, um, typically about 135 miles an hour is where the car ends up sitting on the top end in fourth gear. So we'll go ahead and put our test uh, setup in the car and should be about ready to drive. All 
right, let's go check it out. So the car is making about 530 horse, making about 340 foot pounds. Compared to our stock vehicle, it's actually doing pretty good. We're already making over four times the amount of power that it would factory. At least the correlation between the two, you can see where we took a stock car over here to our turbocharged vehicle over on the right side of the screen. But we definitely have a lot more on the table. So we can go in, we can change the pulse width on our boost control. We can increase our boost pressure. We could possibly uh, change the ignition, which is gonna allow us to get a little bit more aggressive. And we actually can lean out our air fuel mixture, which anytime that you go leaner, typically it's going to make more power. But we're still in that safe range, so we have definitely more power left on the table. All right, guys, that concludes how to boost your vehicle series. Hopefully you guys will sit there, go out, buy a junkyard engine. There's plenty of people doing it. Take a little bit what you learned from this video and apply it to your own stuff. And let's hopefully try to make some more power. Well, this has been fun. How about we try to start cranking some things up and let's see what else we can do to it. I'd never worked on an engine that's actually turned sideways. I never worked on a car like that. I mean, it's pretty interesting. Coming from the world of diesel technology and being able to work on semis all the time is pulling the engine out from underneath the vehicle has been interesting because there's not really a way to do that with diesels. Part of the reason why I wanted to do street rod is specifically because the majority of street rod is customization and you could make a car look pretty much any way you want as long as it runs. You can have something like this or you can have a total like rat rod, doesn't matter and I love the versatility.